What's up YouTube? Melton Metal Anthony here with another one for you. So today I have to weld a gap on some sheet metal. Um, it's not a structural weld, it just kind of has to hold air. It's going on a smoker that's going to be featured in an upcoming video I'm trying to finish up. I, I didn't do the best job cutting this metal. As you can see, it was already pre-patched together, recycled, reused metal. Um, I'm working for a guy who wanted me to make him a smoker and he wanted me to use it out of a bunch of metal that he'd reclaim. We have some blowouts here where my keyhole was just getting too big and getting out of control for me. I'm running a downhill 60-10. Um, I'm trying to keep it as aesthetic as I can with what I'm working with. I'm not really prepping the metal, but um, I wanted to show you guys a trick today and it includes this copper bar. Um, this is a copper backing bar trick. So when you have a gap like this, what you can do is you can put a backing strip of copper. Uh, this is, looks like it's about a quarter inch. And uh, you can go ahead and use this to um, fill in your weld when you have an uneven or a bad gap like I'm, I'm working with here. Um, I'm using um, an eighth inch rod and I'm running it at like 80 amps, which, you know, downhill is kind of a pain in the butt to do. It doesn't want to do it, at least with these Fornius rods, which I really don't like. They're horrible. They're probably the worst running 6010 on the market, in my opinion. This is a perfect project for them. Um, they run like a, a really poorly made 6011. Um, and for you guys who run 6010, 6011 on a regular, you know that the there is a difference in, in the rods. So as you can see, we got a decent bead running along and then blowout. Um, and then the keyhole started getting a little wider. I tried moving down a little bit where the sheet metal was a little bit better kept together. And uh, it just isn't working out. So that's what brings me to this copper bar trick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this copper backing bar. As you can see, there's our, our gap where we're starting to blow out. We're gonna take our copper backing bar, wedge it right there. This happens to be a pretty good spot for this. You don't always get this lucky. Take our clamp, we'll clamp it down nice and tight. Okay, cool. So now as you can see, we have the copper backing the weld all the way down until we have a, a portion here where it can be backed. Um, I'm also using another trick to pull the sheet back together. Um, as you can see, there's an existing seam weld here on this metal. And uh, because of that, the metal was buckled out. So what I did was I just used a, uh, a welding dog to pull that sheet metal back in tight. All right, now that we have this all clamped up, uh, pulled in tight, drawn in where we want it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, start to make our uh, fully penetrating sheet metal weld with some eighth inch 6010. Um, let's see how it turns out. I'm gonna run it around 80 amps. So first, before you do any sort of welding, cutting, grinding, anything to do with this industry, you should get yourself into some PPE. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, well, we got our PPE on, we're ready to weld.
So as you can see, we have a nice bead profile where I didn't have to use the backing strip and then it just gets worse. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna remove the uh, copper backing strip and the clamp, get those out of here. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grind from this point down and just clean it up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and then I'm gonna run another bead over it. And I'm gonna tie in with the old bead and make it look like one continuous bead just for the aesthetic look of it. product it's not perfect it's not the best but it looks consistent and it looked a lot better than it did and here's what the inside of the weld looks like without the copper backing bar on it and then here is let's see if it's holding the touch it's still pretty hot and that's what the back of the copper backing bar looks like because you can see there's no fusion obviously because we're using two different types of metal but there you go so I hope this tip helps. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, that's uh, That tip was to get passed down to me from my buddy Bruce. He was an old millwright. He actually gave me the copper backing bar you've seen me using. Um, great guy, so shout out Bruce. Thank you for passing that knowledge down to me. Um, I hope this helps some of you guys out there uh, when you get into a sticky situation with uh, you know thin material or too large of a gap. You can also do this in a structural application. Obviously, you need to be a lot cleaner than I was just there. Um, I've done it there too, but um, really it's a, it's a good thing to know if you ever need to weld a gap that's just not, it's not panning out for you. I didn't want to bump up to these eighth inch rods and uh, hang at 80 amps, but that's really the low, lowest that you can run these Forney rods. They will not run. As you can see, I was having trouble restarting a couple of times. These are the worst 6010s on the market. Again, I, I, I can't stop trashing these, these rods. They're horrible. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, shoot me a subscribe, a like, do what you can. Don't be greedy with your subscribes and like, especially if this helped you, okay? I got more tips like this coming to you. I'm not the best welder in the world, but uh, I'm just trying to uh, put out some knowledge that I have and I hope it helps some of you guys out. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep on welding, keep doing what you do, and uh, I'll see you next time.